Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to today's Wild Rift video. In today's guide, we're going to be taking a look at the Daughter of the Void, Kaisa. Kaisa is a dual lane carry that has a flexible build path and insane mixed damage, making it very hard to itemize against her. Kaisa really comes online in the late game when she has evolved her abilities. This can be done by buying tier 3 items, allowing her to do insane burst damage and giving her great self pill. Take a look through the build with Kaiser. I have two separate builds to show you in this video. We've got AD Kaiser and we also have AP Kaiser. Now I'm going to focus more on the AP Kaiser build in this video because it is a lot stronger at the moment. But I thought I'd give you all the AD Kaiser build and just give a brief rundown. You know, we have items in here like Phantom Dancer for the crazy amount of attack speed. Uh, shield bow for the lifeline passive infinity edge mortal reminder and a bloodthirst though with the runes being lethal tempo because this is a lot more auto attack focus so we want to get extra attack speed from lethal tempo brutal giant slayer legend alacrity and bone plating with the spells being flash and exhaust now when i swap this over to the ap build you can see that some of the runes and some of the uh, you know the boots for example are pretty much exactly the same we still have gluttonous grease we still have the same precision runes and also the uh, bone plating but then we're changing it to Conqueror because we're going for an AP build. But let's take a look at the build itself in a lot more detail. So Manamune as a first item, this is a one of, if not the cheapest AD items that you can build for Kaisa. As I mentioned in the intro, Kaisa revolves a lot around up upgrading her abilities and evolving her abilities. So when you complete Manamune, you can upgrade your first ability and evolve it as quick as possible, which will give you a huge, huge spike early on. Now, Manamune does take a long time to come online. You need to kind of wait until it gets upgraded to more mana. So your auto attacks and your abilities will do more damage. But since it's a really cheap item, it gives you that early power spike in the game. Glut the Squeeze as your boots. By far the best boots right now. A lot of attack damage, movement speed, and also Omni Vamp. Even though this is an AP build, we are still going to be trying to focus on our auto attacks at the same time. And also the extra Omni Vamp will also help us out with Kaiser. So going for Gluttonous Grease in general, just very, very strong. And then for your boots upgrade, you have a few choices for your boots upgrade. You can go for something like Stasis. If you feel like you're going to dive in like an assassin onto the back line, use Stasis to keep yourself alive. Quicksilver is also very good if you're against a lot of crowd control. You can save yourself from multiple attempts from that one. Or you go for something like Protobot if you feel like you need an extra dash. But since Kaiser already has a lot of great self-peel and also great assassination with her ultimate, I think Quicksilver or Stasis are your two best options then for the second item nash's tooth now what this is going to do is this is actually going to give you the attack damage in the early game so the magic fang will actually give you the attack damage instead of the ability power in the early game because we have man immune which gives us attack damage and also gluttonous griefs that's what the um adaptive means but whatever stat you have more of you'll get that stat so in the early game we'll get attack damage but then when we build a few other ap items then that's going to be converted into ap damage now kaiser doesn't really want to build ap early on especially before the second item because we don't have the second ability upgraded and one of kaiser's main damage sources with the ap build is her second ability and also her passive but just in general nash's tooth is really really strong giving us a lot of attack speed ability haste and also no passive means that our auto attacks will be able to deal bonus magic damage so even though this is an ap build we're still focusing a lot on our auto attacks with the attack speed with the attack damage from man immune glutton screws and also nash's tooth then we start to build ability power rift maker really strong item gives you the maximum health gives you ability power and also gives you ability haste which is great more on the vamp which is awesome the void corruption means that we'll be able to deal true damage as well which means that you know, if champions are building a lot of magic resist or a lot of armor, which as I mentioned already, it's very difficult to um, itemize against Kaiser because she has so many different uh, damage outputs, true damage, attack damage, and also ability power. But didn't true damage will ignore all the armor, all the magic resist, which is quite nice. And the Omni Vamp will be there to keep, help us keep us alive. So again, very, very strong item. Then for your final two items, or Abaddon's Death Cup to give us a lot of ability power and increase our overall ability power as well. And then your last item is flexible. Infinity Orb is here if you want just that insane amount of burst damage. And the cool thing is, is that your... Um, your auto attacks and your passive will also be able to crit as well, which is quite nice uh, because of the uh, the passive of Infinity Orb. But if you feel like you need that 
little bit more penetration then you can go for void staff another great item that gives you flat magic uh the percentage sorry magic penetration which will help you out a lot uh, for the runes conqueror we're going to be taking this instead of lethal tempo lethal tempo is a lot more focused on the ad kaiser build conqueror is a lot more for the uh, ap kaiser build because we're a lot more focused on our passive and also our second ability trying to do as much damage as possible we're not going to auto attack too much we can auto attack a little bit to try and stack our passive but the big thing is trying to land your second ability get that reset on your second ability and that will help you out uh, as you you know as the game goes on then for the runes we start brutal for the early basic attack damage on enemy champions this will just help us give us a little bit more power during the laning phase as kaiser can be fairly weak but also gives her a little bit of power when she has that first ability evolved so you can go for that giant slay this can be swapped out for coup de gras if you're not against a lot of tanks but giant slay is very good if you're against champions that are going to be building bonus health because the more bonus health you um they build the more damage you'll be doing and then legend alacrity is going to be our next option for our rune you can also go for legend bloodline but i like the extra little attack speed since we're not going for lethal tempo and we already have a lot of healing already from um other items so we don't really need it from the um from legend bloodline and then for your secondary rune bone plating is just a really good standard rune for kaisa obviously if you get jumped on by any assassins on bruises this can help you out and pretty much save your life if you want to play more aggressive then you can go for something like mark of the week which will allow your second ability and your other abilities to do additional damage so this can help you out a lot especially when trying to burst down and assassinate someone from 100 to zero but most of the time i like to go for bone plating just to be on the safe side and then with our summoner spells we're going to go for flash and also exhaust since kaisa does have a low attack range and you are going to be jumping into the back line as an assassin exhaust most of the time is going to help you out a lot so that's everything for the build part with kaisa let's head on to the abilities first up for kaisa we have her passive which is second skin we got two parts to this passive the first part is a living weapon which kaisa's abilities evolve upon up fully upgrading an item i'll go into a little bit more detail with each ability and what each ability evolves to but you can't evolve your ultimate that's the only one you can't evolve so when you complete three items you can get all three of your basic abilities evolve your first ability your second ability and also your third ability and you'll know when you have the evolve available because because you'll see the little evolve sign above the ability icons you can see all three here your first ability second ability and your third ability so instead of having the plus icon to level up the ability you're going to use the um, use that button uh, click on it and then you're going to be able to evolve into the evolved version of each one of her abilities now the second part of kaisa's passive is corsic wounds now this is the passive where kaisa's attacks will be able to stack plasma for a few seconds and this can also work with your ability as well you can also stack plasma with your abilities or if a nearby ally champion also immobilizes an enemy champion then you'll be able to also stack uh a, a get a stack of your plasma so if you have a thresh or an alistar or a blitzcrank if they land any sort of immobilizing crowd control that will also work as a stack towards plasma now when you go up to four stacks the fifth one will be able to deal bonus magic damage equal to percentage of the enemy's missing health so all you see is every single time you auto attack or you use uh, use an ability you can see here that little passive sign underneath you can see that there's Four little icons so i auto attack one two three and four times and the fifth one is going to detonate and then deal the extra magic damage again this can also work on some of your abilities like your, uh, your second ability for example example that will also count as two stacks towards your passive and any crowd control that ally champions nearby uh, will be able to use your first ability doesn't get any stacks towards your passive and obviously neither does your third ability uh, but your third ability will allow you to get extra attack speed and you can also use your your second ability to detonate if you really want to just like that you can see that your second ability will always get two stacks towards your passive Kaisa's first ability is Ekathian Rain which launches six missiles that evenly split among enemy champions each dealing physical damage and additional hits on enemy champion or monster will deal 25% damage so if you focus all six missiles on one enemy champion you've got to be doing a little less damage than what you would if you evenly split amongst other enemy champions and this also applies on minions and also monsters in the jungle uh, but if you isolate someone that you can just do a lot more single target damage now the living weapon which is the upgrade passive instead of six missiles it gets upgraded to 12 missiles so you'll be 
basically dishing out double the amount of missiles now even though it says that you will most of the time just you know deal less damage when you isolate one uh, one uh, unit or one champion or minion or anything like that you still want to make sure that you're able to do this i think especially during the laning phase isolating someone and making sure that you don't hit minions with your first ability and you only hit an enemy champion will actually allow you to do a lot of damage you can see here if i just isolate this enemy uh, this uh, enemy dummy here i do 320 damage but if i stand in the middle and if i evenly spear amongst all these um, dummies you can see i'd only do 176 um, so when you're in the laning phase, you know, if these are minions over here, you want to make sure that you isolate this one enemy champion, you auto attack it a few times, and you try your best to make sure that you know the range of your first ability. This will take some time to get used to, but if you know the range of your first ability, then you'll be able to step to step to a side and then just try and stack it as many times as possible. You can see that sometimes even I'm splitting the damage between the target dummy on the left and the target dummy on the right. So it does take a little bit of time. Now, when you upgrade the ability or you evolve the ability, you'll be able to do 12 missile bullets instead and this is when you do a crazy amount of damage i actually auto attack there so it doesn't really count uh but you do a crazy amount of isolated damage you can see here 600 and 17 damage just from one of your first abilities and obviously this is with the ap build as well so imagine how much that does with your first ability again if you split it it will split evenly and you do 255 damage pretty much evenly amongst all enemy champions. Tyson's so second ability is Void Seeker, which fires a long range blast that reveals the first enemy hit. And it adds two plasma stacks and is able to deal a lot of magic damage. And you can see the living weapon bonus, the evolved bonus, will add three stacks instead and also refund 70% on the cooldown when it's hitting an enemy champion and when you get this ability evolved this is really where the when the ap kaiser build really comes online because your void seekers are going to do a lot of damage to enemy champions and you're also going to be able to use this a lot during team fights because reducing cooldown by 70 percent is going to mean a lot in later stages of the game but as you can see it's a very very long range ability that you can use from very very far away and as it mentions you'll be able to use this as vision as well even if you don't hit a target dummy you'll still be able to reveal so this is really good if you want to face check bushes if you want to make sure that there's no enemy champions in the bushes make sure you use your second ability first or if you want to check dragons or barons because as i mentioned even if you miss the target dummy you'll still get a vision for a little period of time or on that target dummy or on that champion so make sure when you're face checking in the bush make sure you use your second ability before you actually go into the bush because you are kaisa you are a carry and you are very squishy so you do need to be very careful you can see here that you add two plasma stacks and you're able to use this you know you know you can use this as pretty much as many times if as you want to uh, obviously the cooldown is quite long uh, when you take off the uh, the zero second cooldown you can see it's on a nine second cooldown uh, which means you have to wait a little while before you can actually use it again and obviously by the time you use it again the stacks of your passive are going to go away so you need to make sure you mix in auto attacks in between but this is really when the evolved version comes in when you have the evolved version if i take off the zero second cooldown if i hit an enemy champion or in this case a dummy you can see it goes from nine seconds down to three seconds so i can actually use this multiple times and if i land two of these living weapons the two of the second abilities on an enemy champion i'm gonna be able to proc my passive straight away because all we need is four stacks plus an auto attack afterwards to stack it so one second ability is three stacks and the second one is going to be six so that means that we get to the one mark straight away again and then we could use the second ability again and then auto attack again use it again and then we can keep applying the uh, second part the plasma stacks every single time on our passive and that's going to allow us to deal bonus magic damage so you're going to be doing a lot of magic damage with your second ability with poking but you're also going to be doing more magic damage if you're if you're able to detonate the plasma from kaisa's passive supercharge is kaisa's third ability which charges up for just under a second gaining movement speed for a few seconds and after the charge you also gain a huge amount of burst for of attack speed and the living weapon upgrade our passive upgrade will allow our third ability to grant us invisibility which is really good for self peel for kaisa because if you do get caught out you can use your third ability to keep yourself alive and to keep you safe or maybe try and reposition as well you can use this in many many different ways now it's important to make sure that you use your third ability 
pretty much when it's available especially when you're pushing towers or taking objectives because your third ability giving you that crazy amount of attack speed is going to be very important for taking down towers objectives or even in team fights as well getting a little bit of extra attack speed you can see this is my attack speed at the moment not a crazy high amount of attack speed but i use my third ability wait for the supercharge to end you can see the our attack speed has gone up by a lot it only lasts for a few seconds remember so you have to uh, bear that in mind and also you won't be able to auto attack or use any of your other abilities or anything when you're charging your third ability so even though i say use your third ability whenever you can whenever it's up and available make sure you're not putting any danger because if you are caught you can't use any other abilities you can't use anything else because this is a charge so you can't auto attack so you see i'm tapping my auto attacks as i'm charging my third ability and i can't auto attack until my charges end this is the same with other abilities the same with other abilities as well if i'm using my third ability and trying to use my second ability afterwards I'm not able to save my ultimate as well it ha you have to wait until your charge ends before you can use your ultimate or your auto attacks and again as it says the living weapon version the upgraded version will allow us to turn invisible you can see there so it kind of gives us a little bit of a safety net as i was mentioning we can't use our ultimate we can't use our abilities or our auto attacks so that whole charge time that we have for our third ability which is makes us a little bit exposed before we have the invisibility when we have that invisibility it's going to allow us to charge off charge up very safely without any enemies give, putting us in any danger then we can charge up keep auto attacking and doing a lot of damage and lastly we have kaisa's ultimate which is killer instinct again as mentioned this ability cannot this ultimate cannot be upgraded can't be evolved it's just going to stay the same pretty much throughout the whole game but you dash to a location near an enemy champion who is marked by plasma gain the shield that absorbs damage for a few seconds now the big thing about this ultimate that a lot of people obviously don't really keep in mind is that it says there when an enemy champion is marked by plasma now what i said before is that yes you can stack plasma with your second ability and also your auto attacks but also your ally champions can also stack plasma when they're using their crowd control ability so say for example an amumu is dashing onto the back line he uses his bandage toss he uses ultimate you can then follow up without using any of your abilities or your auto attack you can follow up with your ultimate and be able to help the amumu assassinate the backline carries this is what makes kaisa so so strong as an assassin and also great with self peel at the same time because when you're in danger you can auto attack an enemy champion or try and uh you know keep an eye on an allied champion that's maybe on the opposite side of the river and then use your ultimate to not only try and assassinate enemy champions but also escape away from that bruiser or assassin and might be doing a lot of damage to you now you can see the area of your ultimate here when i auto attack this is the area of your ultimate so you haven't got too much of an area to play with um you can just use an auto attack and you can just use your ultimate wherever you want to you can just use it and then it just you know takes you to that location and then you're able to do it now the big thing is when you tap the ultimate you're always going to be pretty much within melee range of a champion now some would say this is a benefit when you're tapping the ultimate because you'll get close to enemy champion which means you won't be able to miss your abilities and also your second ability but sometimes you have to be very careful when you're tapping your ultimate um, because if you tap it and if you get put into danger say for example like this if i use my tap here I'm putting myself in and amongst three enemies but if i'm able to manually cast it i can manually cast this all the way over the other side of the wall and then use my abilities and auto attacks which will you know keep me in a safe spot but also allow me to still do enough damage and also i can do the isolation damage at the same time um so make sure i think most of the time what you want to do with your um ultimate is you want to be able to manually cast it again you you'll be able to get over walls as well at the same time like this if i auto attack over the wall here i can ultimate over the other side of the wall or i can ultimate to this side of the wall to keep that safe space between myself and enemy champions so there are plenty of ways that you can use this ultimate to your advantage you don't just have to tap the ultimate and say like oh cool i got a big massive shield i'll be fine make sure you keep in mind make sure you use your you know use your brain when you're uh, using your ultimate because sometimes manually casting ability and going into a different direction different location to what you what would happen when you just tap the ability is going to be a lot more important very very important for kaisa now in terms of combos for kaisa there isn't really any crazy you know combos that you'll be able to do a crazy amount of damage most of the time you just want to make sure that you use your auto attacks in between your abilities and as i mentioned before you always want to start your combos with your third ability to make sure you get that little bit of extra attack speed so all i'm going to do here is use my third ability auto attack first ability auto attack second ability auto attack 
that's basically what I want to do. I can also count in my second ability there if I really want to as well. So third ability, auto attack. First ability, auto attack. Second ability, auto attack. That's basically your full combo for Kaiser. You can obviously mix in your ultimate as well. So you can do like third ability into auto attack, ultimate, first ability, second ability, and then auto attack a bunch of times. There's plenty of different ways you can do it. I actually, <laughs> I actually was able to uh, use my first ability over here because I got Fog of War off. But you get the idea. Most of the time, use your third ability before you get into fight to get that extra bit of attack speed. And make sure you mix in your first ability and your second ability to try and get as many plasma stacks as possible. And remember, keep an eye on your second ability because if you do land a second ability with Living Weapon, it will only be on a two-second cooldown. So you can use this multiple times during the fight to be able to do a lot of poke damage, but also being able to proc your passive or plasma which is going to be very vital when trying to 100 to 0 any enemy champion now taking a look at the leveling order for kaiser this should pretty much be self-explanatory most of the time uh, but level one you want to go for your first ability this will deal the most amount of damage output possible in the laning phase it's not only good for dealing damage to enemy champions it's also good when you're trying to push the lane when you're trying to last hit minions because your first ability will be able to be used at range and also do quite a lot in terms of being able to poke and do a little bit of damage then you want to go for your second ability at level two you can do a lot of quick burst damage with your second ability your first ability and also mix it in a few auto attacks to be able to proc your plasma passive the extra de uh, detonation then you want to go for your third ability at level three this will allow all your abilities to be up and available you can get the attack speed from your third ability the extra stacks and the poke damage from your second ability and also a lot of missiles with your first ability then you want to make sure that you max your first ability first uh, your first ability is going to do a crazy amount of damage when you have your first item completed your man immune completed it's going to be able to do 30, 12 missiles you're going to do a lot of damage which is not going to do a crazy amount for ap kaiser but ad kaiser you're going to really feel the effect of it uh, so going for your first ability is really important and your second ability upgrade is actually dependent on what build you're going if you're going for ad kaiser you want to actually upgrade your third ability second uh upgrading your third ability second will actually give you um that little bit of extra uh, attack speed and also movement speed and also the cooldown gets lowered by quite a bit uh, as you can see but if you're going for ap kaiser you actually want to make sure that you level up your second ability seconds so since we're going for our ap kaiser in this gameplay we're going to uh, upgrade our second ability second and then we're going to upgrade our third ability last as i mentioned the the attack speed and the uh you know the extra movement speed is not going to be that important for with our third ability because most of the time we're going to be playing poke with this kind of ap kaiser build but again if you're playing ad kaiser make sure you upgrade your second uh, third ability second and then your second ability last to make sure that you get the extra movement speed the extra attack speed which you'll be able to hurt a lot with ad kaiser and also make sure that you upgrade your ultimate when available now, that's pretty much everything done a little deep dive for kaiser for you all we're going to head into a gameplay now i'm going to do a voiceover over gameplay to show you a few tips and tricks when playing kaiser in a live scenario in gameplay so i'll see you all in just a second all right on to the gameplay we go with kaiser i actually hit the record button a little bit too late kind of missed the first like 15 to 20 seconds nothing really crazy to happened uh in the first 15 to 20 seconds uh but you can see here that me and thresh are actually playing quite aggressive at level one thresh is like one of the best level one supports because of glacial augment and also his third ability so allowing you to do that and also do other things is also going to be uh very very important uh but you can see we actually get into a, a bit of a level one fight because soraka started with her silence which means that thresh can walk up and do quite a lot of damage uh, but at the same time, Thresh went a little bit too far because I was trying to make sure that I wasn't getting focused by the enemy minions, which is what's exactly what's happening to me right now. Uh, because I think you'll be surprised that minions actually do a lot of damage in this game compared to like you know pc league of legends for example there's a lot of damage that minions can do which means that it's, it's very difficult sometimes to try and take them level one trades when you you know when you haven't taken down any of the minions but still we went for a level one exchange it went okay it probably could have gone better to be honest with you uh, again my first ability was kind of spread between minions and also enemy champions you can see there i wasn't able to do that much damage uh but yeah you can see here what we're going to do is we're actually going to keep the lane as it is like right underneath our tower unfortunately the melee minion went underneath the tower range 
Uh, but you can see, this is what you can do early on in the laning phase. Now, denying minions like this and denying experience doesn't mean too much in Wild Rift compared to PC League of Legends because you have so much passive gold and experience anyway. But being able to do this and deny minions is still going to be very important. And one of the big reasons why you do this and why the support is able to do this is look, exact reasons like this. Where we're able to push up, the enemy champions have to push up to try and take down minions. And that means that we're going to get first blood. And the whole reason we got that first blood, by the way, is if you go back, if you see that me and Thresh are tanking the minions and we're like, okay, we're going to keep Keep the minions underneath our tower so the enemy champions have to walk towards us. Zaya had no flash. It's really easy for Thresh to walk up. And as soon as Thresh walks up, easy kill. But it's such an easy kill in the end for uh, us and um, the Thresh in the dual lane. But again, that was all down to lane positioning and also just positioning the millions, minions in the right place. Uh, you can see just how important it is in general. So again, yes, it's good for denying minions and denying experience and gold in general. Also, it's very good to make to allow to get the enemy champions to push towards you, which is such a big thing. I'm gonna go back here, get my hammer, get my tier of the goddess, start to stack up tier as quick as possible. We got the hammer as well, which means we're gonna get that little bit of AD. And when you get a lead with Kaisa, especially when you get your first kill this early on, it means you can get mana immune super super early, which will allow you to get your first ability upgraded. And then when you get your first ability upgraded, that's really when the Kaisa starts to come online. Obviously, you're not gonna, still not going to be as good as what you are maybe at two or three items, because uh, you can get all your abilities upgraded, but still. You know, to get your first ability upgraded and dishing out double the amount of missiles is going to be very, very nice. You see here, Volibear went a bit of a dive. This was kind of my mistake. I probably should have realized on the minimap a little bit earlier that Volibear was going for the dive. Uh, unfortunately, my Thresh did die for it. Um... Which is kind of my fault. I should have realized that there were, that was going to happen. Uh, but still, I was able to, to clean up anyway, get a second kill. And you can see, I can go back and get Man Immune already. I can get my first ability upgraded at three and a half minutes, which is very, very nice. I'm going to stay in lane for now because I don't want to lose too many minions. So you can see, I'm just staying as far back as possible, making sure I don't get hit by any CC like that, for example, and any abilities like that. Um... Let's start. I'm on, on about half HP. I probably should have gone back here, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm staying in lane. I probably just want to push out this lane. I try and push out this lane and I can maybe go back to base. Here's my first ability. Here's my second ability. There we go. I don't want to engage or do too much because I have my Man Immune upgraded. Yeah, I'm pinging danger here for my support because I know I have my Man Immune. That gets my first ability upgraded. You can see here, by Man Immune, boom. I can pick one of three abilities to upgrade. You always want to make sure that you upgrade your first ability first because you're going to do such a crazy amount of damage with your first ability. From six to 12 missiles in total, uh, which is absolutely crazy. That's no, very, really, very nice. Um, so yeah, we're just going to work towards uh, going for our Nash's Tooth for our next item and we're just going to try and spam abilities most of the time to be able to deal as much damage as possible but you can see here I'm trying to walk up take small trades poke with our second ability and you're just going to see me using my abilities as much as possible use my ultimate here to escape really nice dodge there by the uh volley bear the rest of my team is going to be here to clean up anyway which is really really nice i have to be a little bit careful of the feathers you can see that i'm moving away from the feathers i get the poke down on our second ability and there we go another kill there for me which was very very nice to have you can see how that i used my ultimate defensively that time you can use your i don't know what the brand was thinking there it took a tower shot and died but you can use your your first you, you can, sorry you can use your ultimate aggressively or also defensively like that and the whole reason i was able to use my ultimates on the um volley bear there that was back underneath our tower was because thresh landed his flay he landed his flay which count, counts as immobilizing so it counts as a stack towards the plasma because it's passive which means i can use my ultimate so even though i was in a pretty difficult situation there and i was in between the volley bear and also the zyre and the uh, soraka i was able to escape because of my ultimate and because thresh land in the crowd control i'm flashing over the wall here because i know killing volley bear is is so so important Use my ultimate here onto the Zaya. Going to get another kill here as well. Nice juicy double kill. Trying another kill here on the brand. I don't think I'm going to do enough damage. Rather focus down the dragon. Get that completed. And you can see like. As soon as you get just a little bit of a lead with Kaiser, Just a little bit. Like that's all you need. It's just a little lead. You get your first item. And that's really where you start to come online. 
I got my boots upgraded as well. I was able to buy uh, Oblivion Orb, uh, which is the AP uh, anti-heal, which is obviously quite nice in this situation because we're against uh, a Soraka that's going to heal. Uh, we're up against, can't remember who else. Uh, Zai is going to heal. Obviously, Set has a bit of healing as well if he goes for like Divine Sundra. Volibear has a lot of healing with Divine Sundra and also his passive. So they have a lot of healing on their team. So again, adapting my build, making sure that I go for Oblivion Orb because I know that I'm going to... Oh, maybe get a kill there. Uh, I know that I'm going to be dealing probably one of the most damage... Probably one of the most damages in this game. And we're not going to be auto-attacking that much. We're going to be using our second ability most of the time to poke. So, buying Oblivion Orb for the anti-heal. You know, every time that you're against Soraka, you always want to buy anti-heal. Always. I'm trying to clear this wave. There we go. I do a really good job here at clearing the wave. I'm trying to clear the wave here and trying to stop them from taking first tower. There's a bit of a fight happening in bot lane, but obviously I can't really roam down there right now because I'll just lose the first tower. So, I do need to be a little bit careful. I'm just trying my best here to try and stop this tower. But you can see how annoying Soraka is. You know, I poke down the Zaya. I do a little bit of damage to Zaya. But you can see, I, I can't do enough to defend the tower, unfortunately. Um, the Thresh is roaming. The Thresh is trying to help at the Rift Herald, which I don't think they actually won the, the trade in the end at the Rift Herald, which is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, losing that tower kind of sucks. Um, but it's okay. You know, I would rather give up the tower and keep myself alive rather than die. Because if I die there, I'm giving up the tower anyway. So just backing off, making sure that I um, keep myself alive. I do have a, a shutdown as well, I believe. Being six zeros, eight minutes in the game. You would think I would have a shutdown at this point. I probably do. Uh, so I do need to be a little bit careful make sure I keep myself alive. Which is exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, buying Oblivion Orb does mean that we're actually going to delay our, our second item, a uh, second ability evolve. Uh, which is going to be our, our second ability here because of the um because of the uh because of the ap build that we're going i was just making sure that i wasn't doing anything too crazy i don't actually remember this game too much but you can see here nash's tooth i can go back and buy the nash's tooth now if i want to which is exactly what i'm going to do thresh wants to push this lane so we'll, we'll push this lane we can see that zaya and soraka are both mid lane you can see on the mini map in the top left hand corner so Thresh realizes that and is like, okay, we can get this tower. So really nice play here from the Thresh realizing the whole of the enemy team is mid lane. So we can actually push this tower pretty much for free. They do engage in the mid lane, which is a, a little bit scary because they are a disadvantage because I went back to base. But with Thresh being there, it should hopefully make things uh, a little bit easier. And yeah, you can see they get another kill. Does trade his life for it, but I think killing Zaya for, for a support is totally okay. So we got all three outer towers and this kind of what happens in this situation is everyone starts to get a little bit confused in terms of what what should we do next you know what 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 should we do next after we get three towers three of the outer towers down i think a lot of people would ask the same question as well and it, there's not really anything too crazy that you need to do you just kind of need to wait until you get the opportunity you know these opportunities you know something like this for example where i know my team is pushing up in the bot lane Yes, we're at a disadvantage now, so we need to be a little bit careful. But just taking advantage of them not having any towers. Because they don't have any towers, it means it's going to be very difficult for them to, to move out of base. Because every single time they move out of their base, or every single time they walk past that tower, it's going to be very difficult for them. Because they don't have a tower to fall back to. We have a tower to fall back to. So you can see, in situations like this, the enemy champions, yes, they pushed up to try and get a kill. But they've forgotten that they have an they have a tower but they don't have a tower behind them so you can see here i get a double kill i actually flash here and the reason why i flash was to stop the bouncing of the brand ultimate because it's actually going to do a lot of damage and i did need to be very very careful but yeah, again you know finding little opportunities like that that's all you really need and also waiting for objectives is another big thing you know you, you can see here the dragon's up so all you want to do is as a as a dual lane carry or as a as a carry in general that wants to farm have a look at the minimap every single time you get out of base. And every single time you get out of base, I want you to have a look at the map and I want you to see, okay, where is the, the place that I want to farm the most? You know, where is where where do, where do I have the most minions? Where do I need to make an impact on the map? Where do I need to be at this time? So I know in this situation, I need to be at the dragon because the dragon's coming up. Unfortunately, it got stolen there because Volibear is absolutely broken. 
You can see there that I didn't go to the dragon straight away because I wanted to clear the top way farm. I didn't want to lose all that gold uh, and all the um, experience from getting the um, from getting the minions. You see that all I'm doing right now is just farming. Like, this is all you need to do with Kaisar. It's like, if you keep farming, if you keep getting as many minions as possible, you're going to be able to farm up and just become a late game beast. That's always what's going to happen. So we got Manamu completed, we got Nash's Tooth completed, and now we're going to have Riftmaker completed, which means we have all three of our abilities evolved now. And this is really when Kaisa comes online. Like, you know, at this point of the game, we have three ability, three of your abilities evolved. You have three items under your belt. You're doing a lot of AP damage. You're also doing a lot of auto attack damage at the same time. This is really where you come online. I'm just taking the objectives here. Just going to wait for the red buff to die. Eventually, the Taris is going to take down the red buff. Make sure you leave the buffs to your junglers. It's really important because you have the, the share that you can get. Which is quite nice. The enemies are slowly moving towards the Baron, but at the same time, Garen is pushing up in the top lane. So the enemy team do need to be a little bit careful. But you can see how I'm not pushing up too far. I'm just taking little trades. I'm just clearing the minions. I'm not taking like any crazy trades or I'm not walking up to try and auto attack because I know that we're at a disadvantage here. Especially because this champion's bot side. And also look at my team. Like my team are very, very low on health. So we do need to be a little bit careful. Aris is going to walk up. We do land a hook here, so I'm just going to keep my auto attack distance. I know the Galio ulti is coming in as well. And look at my ultimate. My ultimate is straight onto the back line here. And even though I'm exhausted, I'm going to exhaust straight onto this Zaya and get a cheeky little few kills there. That was really, really nice. Waiting for the right time is, is so important for Kaisa. You can see there that I was just trying my best there to just do as much damage to Volley Bear. But as soon as I have that opportunity and as soon as I know that I can you know, jump onto the back line and try and assassinate someone. That's my go button. Every single time, that's my go button. And that's the difference really between autocast and your ultimate. Because if I autocast my ultimate, I just would have gone on, on the volley bear. But because I manually aimed my ultimate, I was able to go all the way onto the back line and focus the Soraka and also the Zaya. Meaning that Soraka is not going to be, you know, safe at the back line at all. Not at all. So we're going to get our boots upgrade. We're going to go for QSS. As our boots upgrade. I probably should have finished Morella Nomicon instead of going for Death Cap. Because the problem with finishing Death Cap here is that I have to wait quite a bit of gold. So I think it was actually a mistake. I should have completed Morella Nomicon and then gone into um and then gone into Death Cap. But still, we're gonna get a lot of damage in general anyway. You know, from these items. Go for Darius to kill this blue buff. Pick up the blue buff ourselves. I mean, Kaiser works well with both blue buff and red buff. The ability haste from blue buff, the auto attack damage, and the burn from red buff. You know, both of them work extremely well with Kaiser. And that's what I mean by, like, Kaiser's super flexible in terms of how she's played, in terms of how she's built. Like, she's one of the most flexible carries in that dual lane. You need an AP carry? Cool, play Kaiser. You need an AD carry? Cool, play Kaiser. You need a backline assassin to assassinate, like, a Ziggs, for example? Play Kaiser. You need a backline carry that, you know, needs a loot and wants a Lulu and wants to get buffed up to do a lot of auto attack damage. Play Kaisa. Kaisa honestly just fills it all. It's so good. You can see here. Again, using the using this set to actually use my ultimate passively again. I don't want to use my ultimate too aggressively. Really, really nice. Nice hook there by the Thresh as well. Juicy little double kill. But again, you know, using my ultimate to make sure I manually aim my ultimate. So then my placement of my Kaisa goes from the front line all the way onto the back line. And I can just keep doing damage and damage over and over again. I'm lucky with the hook flash here from Thresh. Really, really unfortunate. Somehow survived. I actually have no idea how he survived that at all. I was able to survive that. So we've got two inhibitors. We can just back off for now. We're just going to clear the minions and go all the way back. I got Death Cat completed. Dragon's up as well. So I want to go back here. I don't want to go back in an awkward spot though. I do, have to, do need to be careful here because I did get spotted on this uh, on this little poro. So I'm just going to go back to base here. Just in case I do get worried. Set is chasing after me. And this, oh my god. This QSS timing that I do is flawless. Like, absolutely flawless QSS timing. What I did there is I used my boots upgrades. And what my boots upgrade does is it gives me immunity to crowd control. 
for like just under a second. And I used my immunity to crowd control. The set couldn't ultimate me and do enough damage. So basically all the set did was just create a distance between himself and me, which actually benefits me more than him because he wants to get close enough to use his abilities and use his auto attacks. Yeah, perfect QSS timing. Allowed me to keep my, you know, help me keep myself alive there. And we're just at a point of the game where we're just extremely fed. 13-0-6 in total. We're just so, so fed that there's there's nothing that the enemies can do at all. Nothing at all. The objectives are coming up soon. We, we still want to play this game safely. We don't want to do anything too crazy or too stupid. My team are fighting at the moment. But to be fair, I think my team are far enough ahead that they can probably win 4 versus 5. Actually, it's a 4 versus 4 because set's top lane. So... Yeah, it's a four versus four. I'm just going to come in and clean up as well. Do a little bit of damage to this brand. You can see my damage that I'm doing here. It's just absolutely disgusting. Even though this is AP Kaiser, you it's super underrated how much damage this, this build still does, even with her auto attacks. And also at the same time with her um, with her passive. Because my auto attacks are going to get buffed by Manimune. It's getting buff buffed by Gluttonous Greaves as well. I think we tried to kill someone underneath the Nexus here. I can't remember. I don't think we did. I think we were waiting for someone. It doesn't look like it. No. We're going to finish the game anyway. Flawless game in total. Was a 13-0-6? Maybe it was more. I think it was like 15-0-6 in total. Uh, which is a crazy, crazy scoreline. And it just really shows the potential of Kaiser. You know, Kaiser being up there as one of the best AD carries right now. For, for sure. You know, with how strong she is. MVP performance 15-0-6. In total for the score line, which is absolutely it it's nuts. Absolutely nuts. Look at that. 42,000 damage in total. 40% of my team's damage is just on myself as well. 20%, 27% of my team's gold, 17,000 gold, or well, nearly 18,000 gold in total. And you can see the, the difference in damage between me and everyone else is just far and none. And and this really for me is is the difference between like ap and ad kaiser because ad kaiser has to rely a lot on her auto attacks and positioning whereas like kaiser she can fit but ap kaiser can fit multiple rows so you can still auto attack and do a lot of damage with your auto attacks but you're also going to do a lot of damage with your abilities especially your second abilities so you can play poke you can play assassin you can play peel you can play multiple different roles when playing ap kaiser so yeah hopefully you all enjoyed uh, this run through of the gameplay hopefully you all enjoyed this guide hopefully we'll see you all in the next one until then stay safe and i'll see you all in the next wild video peace